Hey guys, it's Alexa again, and you're watching Taltanic. All around the world, there are some amazing, fun, quirky, creepy, downright freaky traditions that have been followed for sometimes hundreds, if not thousands of years. Today, we join in on the fun and take part in some amazing traditions from around the world. Number 28. Be a guitar hero. Don't deny it. That's right. Fess up. We've all done it, right? It seems to be a natural instinct for young kids when listening to their favorite rock ballad, the air guitar. If you still fancy yourself as a hot air guitarist, sign up for the annual World Championships in Finland. Yes, the generally conservative Finns own this one, and they take it seriously. Number 27. Excellent. Every spring in Bosnia, everyone gets to eat a whole lot of eggs at an egg festival. It has become quite the tourist attraction with many visitors participating, so much so that one would think they don't have eggs in their homeland. Truth is, nobody there is strangely crazy about eggs, but it is a fun tradition. And eggs, of course, are a symbol of birth and new beginnings. Number 26. A dolly good time. Now close to Poland, they toss large, handmade straw dolls into the rivers to mark winter's end. Sounds more like scarecrows to us, but maybe that's a matter of opinion. One man's doll is another man's scarecrow, we guess. The dolls are made up nicely and paraded through the town before being tossed into the water. Number 25. Bring your jolly brawly. We're still in Poland. Make sure you have an umbrella handy on Easter Monday or even a wetsuit by the sound of things. Because if you're there on wet Monday, you're bound to get soaked. The plan is to drench whomever you can with water hoses, water balloons, or any means possible. Number 24. Keeping your nose clean. How many times has your mom told you to stop slurping your soup? In many Eastern countries, to slurp is good manners as it shows appreciation. Told you, mom. However, be very careful when blowing your nose in Japan. Quietly and discreetly is the order of the day here. Even better, don't toot your sniffer in front of anyone if it can be helped. It must be stressful to have a cold over there. Number 23. Spicy Singles Remember the time you were in Denmark and you were pelted with cinnamon sticks? It's a good thing, as it meant you were single and, more importantly, under 30. Those were the good old days. Be less pleased if you find yourself dodging peppercorns, as then you are not only single, but clearly over 30. Number 22. Murder on the Dance Floor The festival Fama Dehana in Madagascar involves paying homage to the deceased in one's family. It's not an annual event, but rather occurs once every few years, probably because it can be super expensive. Families host lavish dinners and donate clothes and new items for bereaved families and for those underground. They also dance the deceased in order to show respect, but not literally, of course, that would be horrifying. Crying is frowned upon as it is a joyous occasion, so a stiff upper lip may be required for some. We see a Madagascar 5 movie in the wings here. Number 21. Reflection on the New Year In Bali, the new year is seen in with a day of silence and meditation. On Yepi, there will be no bonfires or barbecues, work or travel, and obvious leisure and entertainment. Even talking must be kept to a minimum. The only people to be seen in the streets are security personnel to ensure all is in order. Look elsewhere if you're looking to travel for a New Year's bash then. Ibiza may be a little more upbeat than we've heard. Number 20. Six Feet Under The Danes have a very practical view of cemeteries and use them as places of leisure, as we would parks and other open spaces. Cemeteries there are nice and neatly kept, so why not? And we're sure most would agree that perusing through old tombstones can actually be interesting. Thus, on any given sunny weekend in Assistance Kierkegaard in Copenhagen, for example, one will see friends and families enjoying a picnic, walking around, or simply hanging out for fun. Number 19. Snow Joke In Switzerland, a snowman is burnt at the stake to signal the beginning of spring. Well, not a real snowman, as that would totally flat the laws of thermodynamics, but rather an effigy of one. Known as the boog, the burning of this iconic pal made from snow dates back to the 16th century. To add a bit of fizz, explosives are often stuffed inside. Now we're talking. Number 18. Well done for me, please. In Brazil, the Yonamamo tribe eats their loved ones after passing, but fortunately not in a grotesque or cannibalistic way. The remains are cremated and some of the ash is added to a special dish prepared in the deceased's honor. So not so bad, after all. Number 17. Food for Thought Every January 25th in the land of the thistle, residents enjoy Burns Night. Robert Burns was a celebrated Scottish author and poet, venerated for his contribution to local culture. The traditional dish of haggis is prepared, consisting of sheep entrails cooked in the stomach casing and some of Mr. Burns' work is read out loud. Number 16. Showing your opponent the finger Finger wrestling in the Alps, particularly in Switzerland, has traditionally been a method for resolving disputes. Now, it's a big sport. Step 1. Stare your opponent down from the opposite side of the table. Step 2. Select your preferred digit. Step 3. Lock fingers. Step 4. Pull your weaker opponent on and over to your side of the table. And Step 5. Bask in glory. How does one become a finger wrestling champion? Many one-fingered pull-ups and tennis ball squeezing, perhaps. 
Number 15. Rumpy Granny Day March 1st in Bulgaria is Baba Marta Day, meaning the Grandmother of March, but this granny is no pushover. She's somewhat ill-tempered and needs to be appreciated and treated very nicely, otherwise she will delay the oncoming summer. Not cool, Grandma. To celebrate and show the dear old lady they are towing the line, Bulgarians wear white and red bracelets. Friends and family hand the trinkets out to one another as a token of peace and prosperity. Number 14. Happy Landings If you've been in an aircraft occupied by people from Poland, you may have noticed the clapping and all-around festive vibe when the plane touches down safely. We're not really sure why this happens. Hopefully flying in Poland isn't really that scary. Number 13. A toothy smile In rural Indonesia, women sharpen their teeth to achieve a pointier look. This is done by sawing, filing, or chiseling. Women with carnivorous-looking teeth are regarded as extremely beautiful. Fortunately, it isn't compulsory, but is merely high fashion. Take care with that first kiss. Number 12. Braveheart There's an initiation custom in Brazil that is not for the faint-hearted. Young boys prove their bravery by putting their hands in a basket of angry bullet ants. If you have no idea what it feels like to be bitten by a bullet ant, let us give you a blow-by-blow -blow account by one Dr. Justin Schmidt. It really felt like a bullet. It was instantaneous almost even before it stung me. It was absolutely riveting. There were huge waves and crescendos of burning pain coming out of my finger. Number 11. Hold it in. New married couples in the Tidong community in Indonesia have a very strange tradition that they may not use the washroom for three days after tying the knot. If they do, it will bring bad luck to their marriage. Reports suggest this even includes using the room to answer the calls of nature. How they manage that feat, we honestly don't know. Number 10. The Big 3-0 If you're unmarried and are about to turn the Big 3-0 and living in Germany, chances are you'll find yourself cleaning the doorknobs belonging to your best friend. If you want to get out of this tedious chore, grab a kiss from the opposite gender, quickly. Number 9. Sweets for my sweets There are different variations of this tradition around the world, but in Bolivia, it's an annual must-do, and all the pastry shops and bakeries are in on it too. They prepare all of their cakes and desserts as per usual, but in the odd one here and there, they'll hide a coin. Whoever is lucky enough to find the coin will have a new year filled with goodness and wonderful surprises. Number 8. An eye for an eye Or in this case, you're giving up a finger, and it's a tradition belonging to the Dani or Ndani tribe of people that live in Balium Valley in West Papua New Guinea. They have a tradition of chopping their fingers off to show that they are grieving. They also smear their faces with ashes and clay to show how sorrowful they are. The amputated fingers get buried with their deceased loved one as a symbol of their eternal love. Don't you feel a little sorry for the person who might have had an affair? Number 7. Cry just a little In China, brides are said to cry for a month before tying the knot with their betrothed. This strange tradition is followed by the Fuji living in Wuling Mountains. The crying is actually happy crying, and the whole female side of the family joins in on it too, but at different stages before the bride's big day. Number 6. What goes up? Toddler tossing in India is something that has been practiced for 700 years, apparently. The custom is banned in India, but there are still parts of Gujarat, Maharashtra, and Karnataka that still practice this tradition. Babies are dropped from heights of 30 feet into a blanket held out by friends and family and is meant to bring good luck to the falling child. Number 5. Happy birthday to all. When it's a child's birthday in the Netherlands, not only is the kid wished, but the family members too. It's a simple, sweet tradition. Number 4. Break a leg. Or a plate or two. Volterabend is an old wedding tradition that takes place in Germany. All the friends and family of the newlyweds come together and break dishes, which the bride and groom then have to clean up. It's said to assist them in practicing to work together when times are tough. Surely there must be other ways than wasting plates, though. Like try handing them a newborn baby and leaving them alone for a couple hours. That'll do the trick. Although the wedding may be called off shortly thereafter. Number 3. Sink or Swim This is a tradition that will not be around for very much longer, and it is called silt fishing. It takes place in Sri Lanka, and it comes about when there was overfishing near the shores, so the men would fish on top of the water. They would use capsized boats initially, but then developed this unique way of doing it. Some reports suggest that those still using this method are simply there to lure the tourists to the area, and they're not actually catching fish. Number 2. Which witch is which? Over in the Czech Republic, they have an annual ritual. Before you freak out, they don't go looking for real witches. They're just celebrating the end of winter. In the old days, they believed that witches got weaker as the weather got warmer, and it became a tradition to make something that looked like a witch and burn it at the end of April. It's a very festive and fun evening, enjoyed by many. Number 1. Back to Black Blackening the bride takes place in Scotland, and it's a pre-wedding ritual which is way more fun for the bride's friends than the bride herself. The poor girl gets pelted with eggs, sour milk, rotten tomatoes, really anything super disgusting goes. She's then paraded through town in all her disgusting glory. 
It's a metaphor for the tough life that she might have after the wedding. It's supposed to make all marital problems seem tiny in comparison to what she's going through right then. If this video was up your alley, though, why not do us a favor and click the like button? If you feel we left any good ones out, tell us all about it in the comments. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any of the excellent new content we put out every single day. Oh, <laughs>